Hey guys, welcome back. Coffee with Colada presents, and today we are at the Flamingo. Now, we were uh, supposed to uh, supposed to be heading over here by the monument. That's where I was going to go take you guys today, uh, but I got kicked out. Surprise, surprise. Now, that's never happened before. Uh, they have a wedding going on back here, uh, so so unfortunately, I'm not able to uh, to jump in there. Homie Demand, how you doing, homie? Yes, yes, yes. What's going on? Yeah. Oh, I am right now. Hey, Red, how's it going? Hey, Sean. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sean, Stephen Crockett. Yes, it's a nice afternoon. Happy Halloween, everyone. Paul. Uh, thank you very much, Bob. Hey, how's it going? Be happy. Nice to see you. Hey, guys, hit that like button. Nobody's hitting the like button. Hit the like button. Great show at DPN the other day. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Good. Yeah, we did a nice interview, Joe and I. Hit that like button, guys. The more you hit the like button, the more this gets shown. Hey, we got a, we got a new prescriber. Thanks, Jim. Hey, Cindy, happy Halloween. How are you doing today? Hit that like button, guys. The more you hit it, the more the video gets shown. I think I told you guys that by now, right? Jason Rebaz, what's going on, dude? Shout out to Calumet City. Identity, hey, Adam, how's it going? Hey, Brad, happy Halloween. Uh, yeah, I know it would be a nice day to puff on one. I might, I, you know what, Steve, I may actually go up to Enfuego when I'm finished here at the Flamingo. Um, I'll go up there, hit that like button, guys, get this video out there, and I'll get started and take you guys around the Flamingo a little bit here today. Hey, hey, Chris Johnson, another prescriber. What's going on, dude? How are you? Luminous Grin. Looks like the whole crew's coming out today, huh? Steven Crockett, happy Halloween. So uh, normally we say trick or treat on Halloween. Today it's not gonna be a, well, it'll be a treat because we're at the Flamingo, but I'm also gonna do a trick for you guys today because everybody keeps asking if, uh, if I do a trick for you. So I'm gonna do one for you live today. All right, so stick around and we'll be doing that. Um, Red, are things opening up out there? Funny you ask that because I thought to myself on my way here, Walking, uh, driving down the strip. I saw a lot of people out walking on the strip. I saw escalators that normally looked empty for the pedestrian walkways. They were filled up. I saw a lot of, lot of foot traffic, a lot more foot traffic than normal. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, it looks like it's starting to open up. Nice costume, zombie look, good times. I have no idea what the hell you mean by that, good times. Yeah, it is great though to see it. And I see a lot of foot traffic inside the Flamingo right now, which is also good. Um, you know, we want to see Vegas, want to see Vegas open back up. You know, come on. Uh, Robert Petrus, the devil got Frank. Uh, wow. Yeah, Robert, I, I disagree with you, but hey, everybody has a right to their opinion. What's going on, Chris? How are you doing today? Hit the like button, guys. Sorry, I haven't watched the videos. You've been busy, Brad? Well, get unbusy and start watching some videos. Sean, you watched, oh, you watched my audition on America's Got Talent? Cool, awesome. I'm gonna do something for you today. Did Joey the Clown Lombardo visit Vegas regularly while Spilatro was boss in Vegas? So the only thing I know about that is that, uh, and I heard this from Red, that there was a wiretap uh, in one of the hotel rooms here in Vegas that he heard and um, yeah, and, and it was between Tony and uh, Joe Lombardo. So that's what I know. I can't tell you much else about that. Nobody ever told me any stories. It wasn't regular is what's Red saying. So I think that, that he was pretty much, you know, busy with what he had going on in um, Chicago to be coming out here. That's why Tony was out here, so. All right, so, Sonny, it's your ex's birthday. You don't like Halloween, man. Eh, I don't blame you. Listen, Halloween's been shut down for me for a few years now. Uh, 
You know, a few years ago we had October 1, and uh, that kind of killed Halloween in Vegas, uh, that, that, uh, that crazy guy. And, um, yeah, anyway, this year it's this thing that's killing Halloween. Sucks when you own a ghost tour. I swear to God, if I, uh, if I bought a turkey farm, they'd call off Thanksgiving. So, just how it is. Cindy, thank you very much. Yes, angels do go with God. Antonio, why is she still in your mind? You're talking over to, <laughs> talking to Sonny. Yeah, just forget about her, Sonny. Flamingo needs more Bugsy Siegel stuff than that bust and photo in the washroom. Okay, so funny you brought that up, uh, Stephen, because there is more than a bust and photo in the washroom. Where do I watch your America's Got Talent? I'll tell you what, I'll put that on the Adam Flowers channel. You can go to the Adam Flowers YouTube channel. I'll put it up there for you. Uh, that's my, uh, that's more of like a lifestyle channel. Did you figure out the car explosion? Luminous Grin, whoever that guy was, he was wrong, okay? Completely wrong. Um, I was right. It is the spot. I, I went home, I looked, I'm gonna make a video about it and show you guys exactly. The, the spot I was telling you was not misinformation. William Patterson, hey sexy. What's going on, big boy? <laughs> William left a message, a little comment on Red's page saying that I was gay and I liked uh, older men because I hang out with older men. That's right. Okay, so I heard they had escape tunnels for Bugsy. I assume they're gone now. So Chris, that is the only thing that's left here at the Flamingo. Um, and that's the underground parking garage. And his, his high rise apartment is right behind uh, where I'm sitting right now. This is where his high rise was. I say high rise, it was four stories. But back in the uh, 40s, that was a high rise, four stories. So uh, there was an underground parking garage. It had a car and a chauffeur on duty 24 seven. And Bugsy's four-story high-rise, it was built like a, like, like a, a fortress. I mean, it had two-foot thick concrete walls. Uh, there were gun turrets. There were some secret compartments inside that were built to hold uh, machine guns. In the closet, there was a hatch, and it led down a four-story ladder that went to the underground parking garage. And the underground parking garage is... Um, uh, the underground parking garage is where the, the car was. Like I said, if he ever wanted to make a, a getaway, he could. So that's what it was all about. And that's still here. Um, although it's been sealed off and you can't go in it, it is still here. So, all right, so I'm gonna try and sneak back there for a quick second, show you guys this monument. And we'll have a little walk around uh, the Flamingo. I'm gonna mask up because there's a lot of people around, which is a good thing because uh, it's a good thing because again Vegas is starting to reopen so I'm happy to see that so how do you believe Nevada will boat Shahid it's gonna go red Antonio year I'm gonna tell you why it's gonna go red because everybody who lives in this town is tired of it being shut down everybody wants to see it uh, open back up oh who did Frank think killed Bugsy and why there's actually, we're doing a video about that, who killed Bugsy Siegel. Uh, there's several theories on it, but it is still an unopened or unsolved case. Um, it was never solved. So that's still an open case and it's still going on. Yes, yes, it is. Okay, so let's go take a walk, guys. And I'll show you guys a few things which are kind of interesting here at the Flamingo. So <clears throat> here's a fountain for those of you that watch that TV show called Cops, um, they, they pulled it off the air because I guess it's not good to show the TV show Cops anymore. Anyway, right back here behind me in this flamingo right here is, um, all right, hold on. I see a couple of comments I gotta, I gotta talk about. Um, Philip, Joe listens to scientists. Yeah, that's good. He, he should listen to somebody. Um, Steve Cutler, Bugsy was skimming from the Flamingo. That's not why he was killed. Uh, Steve, not in my opinion anyway, he was not killed because of that. So I'll tell you, um, yeah, 
Vegas is opening up. Well, they're going to the lockdown. Cops is coming back and they're filming again. That's that's awesome news, Chris. I'll be honest, it's really good news. Can you guys hear me okay? I'm just asking because there's a lot of noise in the background out here, so I want to make sure that you guys are able to hear me fine before I go any further. And hey, by the way, hit the like button. Any hints on your next interview? Um, okay, great, Chris. Perfect. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Thanks, Red. Um, okay, so let me let me let me tell you this. Then we'll talk about we'll talk about Vegas, but let me take you on a little tour around here. Okay. Thanks, Cindy. I appreciate you. Let me know. Okay, so right here, this uh, flamingo and cops. Now we're talking 20 years ago. This happened. This was ripped out. Somebody on cop. <laughs> They filmed the whole thing. The guy, you can even see where it's broke by the legs. You see where those cracks are? Here, let me turn it around. Show you guys. So those cracks, that's actually where they, they broke it off, right there. And the guy's running down the strip with this flamingo. And of course, the, the cops, you know, they catch him. They bring him back into uh, the flamingo. It took them years. This thing sat just blank. No flamingo there for a long time until they all got it fixed up. So anyhow, let's head on a little bit further through the flamingo we're in the smoking area you believe that they got a smoking area and there's the non-smoking area so we'll go to the non-smoking area okay this is a uh this is a little brick collection over here and you can see all the people that got married here at the flamingo they have their names put in of course they have to pay for these bricks but they uh See this? Everybody who gets married, they get these bricks. Very, very interesting. And then everybody walks on everybody's bricks. It's kind of crazy, but anyhow, here's uh, the back. There's a koi fish pond here at the Flamingo. And uh, let me see a couple of this. Puff, puff, pass, Steve. Adam, I had a home, Mo, a home run in Vegas. You had a home run in Vegas, Mo? That's very, uh, it's very cool. You had a home, you had a home run in Vegas. <laughs> hey, congratulations, that's fantastic to hear. I'm glad that you did. Uh, that's very nice, very, very good. Uh, by the way, there was, uh, when I was in Chicago, um, and I didn't, I, I didn't say this because I kind of forgot to, and I should have right away, but uh, there was a couple of contributions that were made to the channel and uh, by some very generous individuals, and I just wanted to say thank you to them. Here's some more of the koi fish pond and some more of the waterfall. Anyhow, that's what's keeping the channel going. You see the restaurant inside? uh of the flamingo empty no one but the parking garage i had a hard time finding a spot in the parking garage uh while i was uh parking there today so yes uh yeah how of that hotel is original okay brad so good question so let me flip it around one more time for you here. Take a look. This is the back of the Flamingo Hotel. And what I can tell you is that the last part of the original Flamingo stood right where I'm showing you, okay? Right in this area. Just about, I would say, 100 yards, maybe 150 yards past where you're looking. That's where it stood. They tore that part down in 1994, and they built a... Um, and they built a uh, uh, monument. They also built a wedding chapel there. And unfortunately, I shouldn't say unfortunately, but there's a wedding going on there today. So I'm not able to get in there and show you guys that part of the flamingo and the monument. We may sneak in there a little later. We'll see once we get going here. So let me take you guys around, show you a little bit more. So to answer your question, nothing's original at the flamingo any longer. Um, except the underground parking garage, which you can't get to. So that's, uh, I hope that answers your question. Questions anyway. Now, another interesting tidbit at the Flamingo, and that is 
that there are pelicans. Now this area, years ago, let me put this down. So years ago, this area housed penguins. Unfortunately, the penguins didn't work out in the desert climate. There's one of the uh, pelicans right now. They rescued these pelicans from a, uh, you know, the, the, the garbage uh, thing, you know, with the, the twisty ties that get tied up in them, the nets and whatnot. So, so they rescued them, and there's two of them, it's a pair. And the, the work here, the staffers, once we feed them and take care of them, nicknamed them, nicknamed them Bugsy and Virginia, or Benjamin and Virginia, they call them Bugsy and Virginia. Anyhow, those are the pelicans that live here at the Flamingo. There's a bird show here, but there are also Chilean flamingos. I'm gonna take you over to that area right now so you guys can have a look-see. And let's flip it around. So there they are, Chilean flamingos. And they get their color, the pink, when they're born, they're actually born like an off-white but all of the omegas that they eat, the fish and shrimp, that's what gives them their pink color. And just to the left here, check it out. There is our resident black swan. Very rare bird, but there it is. Pretty cool. Yes, yes, black swans. And I don't see, when the heck did this happen? Let me, I'm looking back in the comments. Give me just a second to look here while we check we supported the channel and I missed it. Who was it, if you could tell me? Oh, that part, perfect. They tore down, they tore me down in 1994, that part. That's pretty funny. Anyway, that's our, there's our help. And as you can see, they're gonna be feeding the flamingos. This is something we don't normally get to see, at least not on the mob tour. We usually aren't here this time of day, but let's check it out. Yeah, they're feeding them. Yes, Red, I am actually one hell of a tour guide. At least that's what I've been told. So, look at this. Oh, they know what time it is. Here they come. <laughs> time to eat. Sunny, yeah, there are desert penguins. I don't know why they didn't make it here or why they didn't last, but uh, yeah, they do have desert penguins, so. All right, let's flip her back around. Okay, let's move on. And uh, interesting uh, Halloween costumes, if you take a look over my shoulder. <laughs> it's a flamingo costume. Yeah, okay, let's keep going. Uh, how could you book a tour, Adam? You can go to VegasMobTour.com and that's how you would uh, go about booking a tour. And that's the other news I wanted to tell you guys. And we're getting close to, uh, I think we're getting close to reopening the tours, which is exciting because I'm excited to be given some. Unfortunately, we kind of missed the Halloween season because we do run the ghost tour uh hey happy birthday you turned 11 years old in phoenix today so that black bird i don't look like the other bird <laughs> that's funny um chris johnson give a shout out to my son well happy birthday to chris johnson's son what's his name chris Ah, Phoenix. Oh, okay. I thought he was in Phoenix. Cool name. I like it. Hey, happy birthday, Phoenix. Uh, did Frank and Tony have ties to the El Cortez? All right. The answer to that is no. Let's, let me sit down over here and we'll talk a little bit about it. And I'll tell you exactly what happened. Walking around with this freaking mask on. Let me sit down here. Back to where we started. Okay. And if the wedding breaks, I'm going to quickly move because they're having a wedding back here. And I'm hearing people, so they may be coming. Anyway, Bugsy Siegel was born in 1906. 
Williamsburg, New York. It's actually the same place that Bobby Lucetta was born. And if you're watching, Bobby, I hope that you're uh, feeling well. And uh, I hope that you're, uh, you're doing all right right now. Okay, so. He was born in Williamsburg, New York, 1906. And he grew up and started his little racket, which was, you know, they had push carts back then. Well, push carts where they sold goods on out on the street, the peddlers. And what he would do is he would offer insurance to them. And they would say, insurance, insurance for what? He'd say, insurance for me. Insurance. And if they didn't pay him the dollar a day, he'd go at night and he'd burn their push cart down. So that's how Bugsy Siegel got his, his start in his career. He became friends with Meyer Lansky. You guys know that name. They formed a little group called the Bugs and Meyer Gang, okay? Um, so they formed a group called the Bugs and Meyer Gang that later became Murder, Inc. They were paid hitmen, is what they were. They worked for Lucky Luciano, uh, and that's what, how they were discovered, really. Uh, and, and Lucky sent Bugsy, when he was about 40, to go to um, LA to start a transcontinental uh, the Transcontinental Wire Service, which was, or Transamerica Wire Service, which was a wire service for book bookmaking, so that they could take action on bets in other cities and in other parts of the country. Um, the bookmakers could. So that's what he was sent out here to do. While he was uh, in LA, he made trips to Las Vegas just to see how, you know, how things were going in Vegas and what it was all about. Um, now, forget about Warren Beatty and the whole Bugsy movie, and I have a vision, and him pulling it, it's bullshit. That it, it didn't happen that way. Uh, what happened was, he came out here, he saw that this town, everything that uh, was illegal back east is illegal, uh, or was legal here in, in Vegas. It's the gambling, the prostitution, all of this. So, Bugsy and three others, including Meyer Lansky, I believe Gus Greenbaum, and Mo Sedway. They all became quarter owners of the El Cortez. Somebody asked about the El Cortez, this is where it comes in. So they're quarter owners of the El Cortez. However, you gotta remember, this town was run by the good old boys, cowboys. Uh, they're, they're, um, <laughs> they're, they were, I'm sorry, I'm reading your comments. It was run by the cowboys they would not let them expand the El Cortez. They wouldn't give them more electricity, more water. So they quickly sold the El Cortez. They turned to profit and Bugsy came down Highway 91, which is now the strip. Okay, that used to be the highway through town. Now we have the 15, but that was the strip. Uh, and that was coined the strip by a guy by the name of uh, Guy McAfee. And Guy McAfee, was uh, from LA, he was a police officer, he was a corrupt cop, and he came out here and was running the Paro Dice nightclub, which was on Highway 91, and he coined it the Strip because he was from LA and he was used to Sunset Strip, so he started calling it the Strip, and it stuck, okay? So, anyway, back to uh, Bugsy. Bugsy came down Highway 91, and there was a failed, not failed, but it was a construction project right here where I'm sitting on this site at the Flamingo, and it was being run by a guy named Billy Wilkerson. Now, Billy Wilkerson was a mob, uh, he was a nightclub tour, he owned a few nightclubs, and he also was the editor of The Hollywood Reporter. So, the, the problem was, was that he had a bit of a gambling problem. So, <laughs> he had just a bit of a gambling problem. He's a degenerate gambler, and he was losing all of his money in these, uh, these underground like nightclubs in LA. So his friend suggested, why don't you build yourself your own casino? That way when you gamble, if you lose, you lose to yourself. What friends, right? <laughs> what infinite wisdom in the world today. Lose to yourself. Okay, so anyhow, he was building, Billy Wilkerson was building on this property. Now he had registered the name and all hotel, um, Hotel Wilkerson, I believe, was what he had it registered as. Uh, I'm going to tell you the story in a second. I wish a mob dude named me and not some cop. I wish a mob dude had named 
Okay, it, not some cop. Yeah, well, it wasn't. But, in for, but if you look at it as Guy McAfee kind of, he was a corrupt cop. So it, it's, what's the difference? Corrupt cop, mobster, same thing, you know? He was running underground illegal stuff while he was head of the vice squad. He's supposed to be fighting vices if instead he's running and making money on him. Anyway, so back to the story. Uh, Billy Wilkerson was building this place and he ran out of money. He went bankrupt. So Bugsy stepped in and was like, hey, I'm your new partner. <laughs> and Bugsy invested a million dollars of his own money. That wasn't enough. He, he, you see, you got to remember, the building's taking place because the grand opening was uh, 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 the day uh, before, day, before, day after Christmas, 1946. So December 26, 1946 is when it opened. But you got to remember and keep in mind that the um, that World War II was happening. So all the building materials, all the stuff that's really important is going to the war effort, right? Like all your iron, all of this, that's all going to the war effort. So Bugsy was buying the materials off the black market, pretty shady individuals that he was buying them from. And since he's buying them off the black market, he's getting... I mean, these, these guys, they'd sell, them like, they'd sell them a load of whatever, concrete, and then that night they'd steal it off of the job site and they'd resell it to them the following week. Some of the material he paid two to three times over to, to have because that's, that, that was it. I mean, that's what he needed it. Anyhow, he didn't have enough money, so he went to Meyer Lansky and Lucky Luciano and he borrowed $2 million. $2 million in 1940s, it's like... It's like borrowing a hundred million today. It's a lot of money. I mean, you're talking about a ton of money. So anyhow, uh, that wasn't enough. So he borrowed 2 million more. So he's $4 million into Meyer and Lucky. And believe me, these aren't the kind of guys you want to borrow that kind of money from. But indeed, he, he bought it. And he, um, he overbuilt everything, everything, for instance, just to have a toilet in every single room of the original 77 room hotel, it cost a million dollars to do that. So, um, so everything was great. And the opening, it was delayed. Anyhow, he opened it the day after Christmas, 1946. And Virginia Hill, let's talk a little bit about her because she was sent out here to watch over Bugsy to keep an eye on what was going on uh, with the money, make sure he wasn't skimming any of it. Bugsy, uh, Virginia was kind of a, a mobster groupie. I guess you could call it that, a mobster groupie, okay? So anyway, she, um, hey guys, hit the like button. Don't forget to hit that like button while we're doing this. All right, so anyway, she was a bit of a groupie. She was sent to watch you. She had dated Al Capone. She dated, let's put it this way. She was pulled up, uh, she was subpoenaed on the Kefauver hearings. And remember, this is in the 50s, the Kefauver trial, 50 or 60s, anyway. On live TV, she was asked, because she had a receipt, matched every single bit of money that was given to her by every guy. And they asked her, the senator asked her during the trial, said, well, why did these guys give you all of this money? And live TV, she said that she, she said, because I am the best damn, let's just, just two words, best damn in all of, in all of Hollywood. And, and, and what she was referring to herself as was uh, she was the best at giving oral sex, okay? So put those two words. She said it on live TV back then. People freaked out because, you know, they're covering their kids' ears, they're listening to this. Anyway, grand opening was a bomb here at the Flamingo. First off, it rained for two weeks straight. So the dirt airstrip that we had at McCarran turned to mud. Planes couldn't get in, they couldn't get out. Bugsy had chartered six planes to bring all of his friends from uh, Hollywood out here to uh, bring them from Hollywood out here to uh, Vegas. They couldn't come. So uh, so that happened. He uh, he had brought a flock of flamingos here for the grand opening. Half of them died. He put Baccarat crystal ashtrays out on the uh, blackjack tables. People were stealing them. To top that off, two owners from the El Rancho came down here and they uh they were winning they were winning so much bugsy threw them out you see you don't throw people out for winning you know eventually if you keep them there long enough they'll lose it all back but he was upset you know how things were going so he threw them out the um 
a few weeks later, he shut it down and he shut it down and he wanted to you know, finish up the rooms, get it really ready and you know, then reopen, which he did a few months later. Uh, they reopened in March of 1947 and everything went great. They realized that Bugsy was right. This place was making money hand over fist. You see, it was the first carpeted joint, car carpeted joint in town. Um, meaning it was the first place that had carpeting when you walked in. Uh, up until that point, it was like dirt floors, spittoons next to the tables. I mean, it was the wild, wild west out here. So that's, uh, that's it. That's how it goes. So hi, big boy blue. Good to see you today. Uh, anyway, let's get on with this. Uh, they reopened and in June 20th, 1947, that's when uh, Bugsy had left Vegas and just coincidentally, Virginia flew to Paris. She was in Paris at the time. He went to uh, her mansion in Beverly Hills, which was uh, it's a big, it's beautiful. I've been there before, I've taken photos of it. Uh, he was sitting in front of a window of the mansion and he was reading the newspaper. There was another gentleman in the room with him. Um, a barrage of bullets came through the window. One of them struck uh, Bugsy in the back of his head, sent his left eyeball sailing 15 feet uh, across the room, and that's how Bugsy uh, met his demise. Thanks, Red, appreciate the support. Yeah, I know, right? Don't forget to hit the like button, guys. Uh, the bullet in both eyes. Yeah, the left eyeball actually flew out of the socket. In the right side, it comes out, the bullet came out beneath the eyeball, but if you look at the autopsy photos, you'll see like a white white stuff in the eyeballs. And uh, back in those days, the um, the undertakers didn't have the same cosmetic, uh, the same cosmetic um, cosmetics that they have today. So what you see that white stuff in the eye is a plaster of Paris. They would fill it with plaster of Paris. So, okay. So uh, yes, Sean um, Sean Connery passed away today. That's a that's a loss. I really like that guy. I think a favorite performance was in uh, The Rock. That's where I really thought The Rock and uh, Hunt for Red October. Yeah. Have I been to Carol Lombard's crash site? No, but we do go to Good Springs on the ghost tours and we point out Mount Potosi where uh, the plane crash did occur. So, okay. Anyway, um, let's get back to Bugsy and the Flamingo here since that's where we are. Um, so that's what happened. Now, who killed Bugsy? So there's a lot of theories. First off, I'm gonna make it very clear that it is not, um, it's not, it's not a solved case uh, and, and it's still an open case as to who killed Bugsy. So let's just say no one really knows. But here's what I do know, and I'm gonna tell you about this. Uh, I met a gentleman, I was visiting in a nursing home. I was visiting a friend who was in a nursing home, a rehabilitation center, I should say. And there was another guy that was in this nursing home. 28 million, two millions equivalent to 28 million. Okay, thank you for the correction, John O. In 2020, 20, I said 100 million, so 28 million, almost $30 million is what it's equivalent. Anyway, okay, so, um, Wow, I'm just reading comments, sorry. I, you guys are distracting me. Anyway, so here's what happened with, um, with him. <clears throat> and what I, what I believe anyway, and again, there's a lot of theories as to who did it, but what I believe is uh, this gentleman saw Virginia Hill about two weeks prior to Bugsy being killed, saw Virginia Hill standing with a soldier. He was dressed in uniform. And as it turns out, as he approached, he heard the guy say, and, and you gotta remember, now Bugsy and Virginia, I mean, crazy relationship. They would get into an argument, it would turn into a fist fight, she'd end up with a black eye, he'd end up with a split lip. I mean, these two, they'd fight like hell, and then they'd go up to the suite, and they'd make up, if you know what I mean. And, and it was just, that's how their relationship was. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of that going on. Don't forget to hit the like button. There was a lot of that going on. So 
It was just after one of these smackdowns that she was standing there with this soldier and the soldier said, I swear to God, if he lays one more hand on you, I'll kill the SOB. And that's what he heard. Sindler is his name. Bernie Sindler. I met him. He told me that right from his lips. His lips to my ears, I, could, I heard him say this. Told me, recounted it. Anyway, I don't know if he's still around. There's a video somewhere on YouTube of him telling the story as well. But I, I heard it right from his mouth. So two weeks later, he ends up shot in the head. Would you believe that, hey John, shout out to the Cleveland crew. I like, love it, love it. Um, so here's what, here's what we believe, is that her brother is the one who shot him. Mysteriously, he was like questioned two days afterward. He was questioned. He wasn't detained, and then he disappeared. He just suddenly vanished, and he was gone. So, who killed Bugsy Siegel? I'm thinking it was Virginia Hill's brother. All right, that's just what I believe. Uh, so, <laughs> I think it was my first time hearing that too, Brad. Uh, anyway, that's what I believe. So, who knows if that's what uh, if that's really what occurred or what didn't occur? But that's what we think happened. So. Anyway, she was found years later, by the way, um, in Switzerland with a bottle of sleeping pills next to, uh, next to her body. Supposedly, she, uh, she killed herself with sleeping pills. Why she would have done that, uh, ha having a small child at the time and all, it, that doesn't make sense. Did the mob do her in as well? Who knows? I mean, I'm not a, an expert on that, but that's what I, that's what I think anyway. What, what went on so anyway let me show you guys my view of what the flamingo looks like right now as far as foot traffic and all goes so you guys can see now normally this would be a lot more uh, this would be a lot busier but still this isn't dead like it was I mean there are people walking about inside the flamingo so yeah anyway that's what's going on here okay let me see if I can do I'm just gonna sneak in here and see if I get in trouble or not What's the worst they'll do is kick me out again. Okay. Let me take you guys. Now, this is the site where the flamingo actually stood, the last part of it, um, before they tore it down. And this is where it was. Let me turn it around here, guys. I'll show you really fast. Let's see, we got front. Yes. In here? Yeah, there's people in here right now. African American. I have no idea oh, what. Yeah. We posted, my brother posted to be married. Oh, you got a wedding going on here? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just know there's a wedding way in the back over there, and that's what uh, oh, okay. that's going. So yeah, but. No, there they're not. I was wondering if our, our group got here already. Yeah, I have no clue. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you have a great day. Okay, so let me just sneak through here. This is where it was. Now this wedding chapel right here, that's where his original, uh, his original four-story high-rise was. And here is the monument built to Bugsy Siegel. And you see his face on there. And I'll let me zoom in a little bit. There you go. And it tells you everything that I told you about. The original hotel stood there was torn down in 93, had 77 rooms, five possible exits, underground parking garage with a chauffeur. Bugsy was killed by unknown assailants. Anyway, so there's that. Let me get out of here before I get thrown out. It's a very beautiful area, by the way. We've got waterfalls back here. Nice place for a, for a uh, wedding. It's a good wedding venue, I should say. All right, so. Let's move around through here. Have a great day. You too, sir. Okay, so I love it when people call me sir. I'm not used to that. I'm used to stud muffin or hunk, you know? Sir. Anyway, <laughs> so let's, uh, don't call me Bugsy. Yeah, Carl, you would never call Bu Benjamin Bugsy to his face. Uh, you'd be looking at the wrong end of a Tommy gun if you did. So. Anyway, that's how, how it went down. Some beautiful pools back here at the Flamingo as well. Show you guys a little bit of that. 
as you can see, water slides going into the pools. And the, uh, the water slides actually connect it pool to pool. So it's kind of interesting. Fun pools to hang out. All right, so I am going to begin venturing out of the Flamingo. You guys have any questions or anything you want to see? Uh, doorbell ringing with trick-or-treaters. Not answering it until you're done, Adam. <laughs> oh, cool. So there's a doorbell going. Maybe this is a good spot I can do this. So I'll show you guys a trick. Let's see. I'm going to do something for you guys. I've never done this before, but I think we'll, at least not on here, because everybody's interested in mob material so let's try this all right so stick uh stick with me for just a second guys i gotta change bases on my camera and then i gotta stick my camera onto something to show this to you oh i want to make a jack off wear a mask make it happen again i'm still reading your comments red looks like it's hard to breathe the mask on it is it actually is it's not not exactly the easiest thing to do okay hold on bear with me let's do this dun, dun. i'm strapping it to a tree right now so you guys can see this and see me hold on for just a second i'm gonna love all of this camera crap Oh, hold on. Here's where I'll put it. There, the branch will keep it. Okay. I'm gonna loosen this up. Okay. Hey, Cindy, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Okay. Huh. Well, I guess I'm not gonna be showing you guys that, am I? Huh. I was going to the way. In case you guys would like one, these are going to be on frankcolada.com. So if you guys want a, a prayer card uh, for funeral, um, the ones that were left over anyway, so it's supply, but I'll put them up there for you guys. So, um, and of course that helps support the channel as well. So, huh, huh, huh. Sorry, bear with me for just a second. Hmm. All right, well, that answers that question. Hmm. All right, next time, I'll show you guys. <laughs> I guess I left it at home. So, let's keep walking. Sorry guys, no trick today. Or maybe I'll do some special things for you guys later on today. Usually I live twice on uh, Saturday, but maybe this uh, maybe this Saturday I will. Anyhow, thanks guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you next uh, Saturday. Or maybe again, like I say, maybe later tonight I'll do it just for the hell of it. I'm out. Have a great day, guys. Thanks.